For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's a tie to recognize from the Bible that we're all sinners. The wages of sin is death. Death is going to happen. Death can happen at any moment or it can happen any year. And God so loved the world that in our condition of sinners looking forward to death, we're born to die. And if we are to die in our sin, without the merit of Jesus Christ. You will die and enter a place called hell and spend all eternity there. You're not going to hear in the pulpits of churches this weekend about hell. You will hear about Easter, Estar, which is pagan worship, and we preach Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. If you want the love of God, the love of God, John 3.16, is past tense, it is on a place called Calvary, about 2018 years ago, God climbed the hill Calvary and suffered and died for our iniquity. It's not about a bunny. It's not about Santa Claus. It's about Jesus, God, manifested in the flesh and suffered and died that we may have eternal life. It's not about worshiping the sun in sunrise service. It's not about pretty dresses and bonnets. It's about God's son suffering, dying willingly for our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There have been many people today who have woken up inside the gates of hell by their unbelief of Jesus Christ. And they're never going to come out. There have been few people today that have died, and they've died in the Lord, and they've been absent from this body and present with the Lord Jesus Christ for all eternity. The difference is, one is of peace, and one is of torment. And to attain peace of God, you've got to believe on God through Jesus Christ. I will tell you one good fact. I will tell you it is more sure by the Word of God, the King James Bible, that Jesus will come more than the Easter Bunny will come. Jesus is more sure than Santa Claus. Jesus is more widely known than Uncle Sam. We in America today, throughout the world, we worship make-believes. We worship people who are not people. We worship things that are not things. They're called idolatry. And they are even in the Baptist churches tomorrow morning at the Lord to tarry. And I'm here to tell you that your religion, your baptism, your sunrise service cannot save your soul. Only Jesus Christ, that the begotten of God, His Son, who is Jesus Christ, manifest in the flesh. 
You see, we're going to celebrate a time of the resurrection. What is the resurrection? The resurrection is that your pope, your pastor, your priest, your religion has never come out of the grave, but Jesus Christ, after three days and three nights, came out of that grave, and the angels of heaven proclaimed, He is not here, He is risen, and tell me where Easter Bunny's coming with that mess. There is no Easter Bunny, but there is a God in heaven, Jesus Christ, that suffered and died that you may have eternal life. And we get a, a extra on this weekend. Not only do I get to kick Easter, but tomorrow is National Atheist Day. Let all the atheists come out on April 1st, on April Fool's Day, and I can show you from the Bible, April 1st, April Fool, is a atheistic holiday. May I read from Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. Listen up, atheists. This one's for you. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalms 14, verse 1. Psalms 53, verse 1. Two times for your pleasure. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And on April 1st, 2018, the National Gathering of Idiots and Fools who say there is no God, we will also worship Esther, who is not God. And those people that are involved in that wickedness will die in their sins and wake up in hell and say, Jesus, what happened? Did not my children get Easter eggs? Did not we go to Easter service? And Jesus, according to the Bible, will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. God does not recognize religion, and religion is tomorrow. If there is a tomorrow for Christians. Because I told you, Jesus is coming. He may come this afternoon, he may come tomorrow, he may come next week, but he's coming. You need an app to see Santa Claus at the Easter Bunny, and I have faith that I will see my God. Real. And those that are not of God will not see God, and your Christian friends will be gone. And for you to be gone and not left behind, you must put your faith and trust in the finished work of God, Jesus Christ. You must be saved. You must be saved by the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. And you're not going to hear that in churches tomorrow in worship of the resurrection of Jesus. I'll tell you where else you're wrong. It was not a good Friday. How dare you say the time represented of Jesus suffering and dying on that cross for my sins is good? How dare you? Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. I'll try to read with this wind, but Isaiah 53. Who has believed our report? I have. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to open up my heart and open up my mouth that I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. 
I have not eaten Jesus. I have received him by faith. I did not find Jesus in a basket. I found him by faith at the empty tomb. I found Jesus seated at the right hand of God at this moment. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He's revealed to you by a preacher on the street, conforming to the fact that Mark 16 says, Go eat all the world and preach the gospel. You know what, sorry? There are many of you here are religious, and you're looking at me like, what on earth is he doing? He can't be of love. He's mean and loud. He has no coffee and donuts. He doesn't have a dressed up something. He's not like my pastor. Thank God. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a root out of a dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus Christ would have never made a poster to be hung on a child's wall in his life on this earth about 2,000 years ago. You would not have said, Oh, how wonderful, how handsome Jesus was, according to the Bible. He is despised and rejected of men. And boy, does that happen at the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market. You didn't know that you are written down the scriptures of Isaiah 53, verse 3, but did you know he is despised and rejected of men? I'm talking about Jesus. The Jesus you're not going to hear tomorrow in your Sunday service. Because Paul says there's another Jesus, and that's the Jesus that is in America today. He's not despised and rejected. He's cool. He's in Hollywood. He's my man, Jesus. I say he's of the devil. The Jesus of the Bible is, re is rejected. He's despised. He don't go with the many. He goes with the few. Why don't you hear preaching on the streets all the time? Because the few are right. And the majority is always wrong. I'll tell you who the minority are. The ones that believe the Bible, believe on Jesus, and do what he says to do. He says, go in all the world and preach the gospel and tell those people you're wrong and without Jesus you will burn in hell. Tell them. That I suffered and died according to the scriptures. I, Jesus, was buried. I, Jesus, three days and three nights. On Sunday, he arose from the grave. Hey, Catholics, three days and three nights is not Good Friday. Go back to math class. You ignorant fools. Oh, Good Friday, Jesus died, Sunday he arose, three days, oh man, that don't make sense. And neither does religion. Today's message brought to you by the Blue Pill. If you get all nervous, call your shrink. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. That's Jesus. And acquainted with grief, that's Jesus. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Right now, today, present. You wish the Bible would be shut up. You wish the guy would go away and you can conduct your business. We don't want Jesus. But we got Easter lilies for sale. 
you got to stop at the store and get the Easter egg, but we don't want Jesus. No. Got to go to that sunrise service tomorrow, but don't want that guy preaching from the Bible. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. There is no other. For religion is man-made, Jesus Christ is God-approved. This message is sponsored and brought to you by and approved by God the Father. It's out of the King James Bible. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Boy, there's many a time that God has taken my sorrows and, and bore them. There are many griefs in my life that God has taken care of. God is just so wonderful. But He was wounded for our transgressions. Uh-oh. The passion of Christ. It is because you have no passion for Christ, you rather sin and be in darkness and have no hope. And that Jesus Christ suffered and died that you may have hope. You may have eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You come to Jesus as the sinner that you are, He will not refuse you. He will not reject you if you come with a humble heart. And it's kind of funny because we just talked to a man who's going to be baptized by a church and they're not even going to help him until tomorrow when they baptize him. So far for church. We're supposed to be looking at this time of the year at the death, burial, and resurrection. Why? Because you are the sinner that Jesus Christ died for. And according to John 3.16, the love is past tense. That love is upon Calvary's hill when Jesus Christ suffered and died. That the hope is not in church. The hope is not in you. But the hope lies upon Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes, we are healed. Now imagine the brutality of one for another. Imagine the wrath of God upon someone and not me. Imagine someone going to hell that I may not go to hell. On April 21st, 1987, the moment that Jesus Christ whippings and beatings and nailed to that cross was applied to my sins. And coming to the cross of Jesus, not seeing chocolate but seeing blood, God's blood, Acts 20:28. And applying that blood to my sins by faith, my name became written down in the Lamb's book of life. And when I came out of that empty tomb, through that stone that was rolled away, I became a Christian. Going to Mass does not make you a Christian. Going to Baptist church don't make you a Christian. Watchtowers don't make you a Christian. Populating other things
things out in our space doesn't make you a Christian. Baptism don't make you a Christian. Easter will not make you a Christian. Put your faith and your belief and your trust upon God through Jesus Christ for your sins makes you a Christian. The Bible says, what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? What's the question? What is being saved? A message that even Christians don't want to hear. The idiot Pope said there's no hell. Then why is there a Catholic church if there's no hell? What do you need the church for if there's no hell? Why would you need a Pope if there's no hell? Which shows that the Pope has never read his Bible. Because in the Bible there is a hell. And hell is literal. All is not well, there is a hell. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not they which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Do you want to know who said that? Matthew 10, 28. I'll give you a clue. Jesus never preached about hell. Matthew 10, 28 is the words of Jesus. Yes, people, Jesus preached about hell. Matthew 10, 28. Luke 16, 23, something else Jesus said. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. That is Jesus speaking. So please don't come to me and say, Jesus never preached hell. I will tell you next time you never read your Bible. And smile. Because I'm quoting from Jesus about hell. And if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. That's what the Bible says. The wicked shall be turned into hell. Psalms 9, 17. Proverbs 15, 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. In the Bible, there's a hell. Now, if your Bible don't have hell, it has Sheol, you got the wrong Bible. If your preacher doesn't preach about hell, you got the wrong preacher. As such as the Catholic Church has got the wrong pope when he says there's no hell. And I've read, what, four verses from the Bible and there's more to read. What's the problem when the Bible says there's a hell and your church says there's no hell, your beliefs say there's no hell, and then you go to work and you hear your co-workers say, I go to hell. It's in your heart that there's a hell. And we stand and preach that you may not go to hell. And what must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Hell. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's plain and simple. These are coming out of the Bible. I just got them as a quick reference here. I can open the Bible and show you the passage. Isaiah 5, 14. Therefore hell has enlarged herself. Well, how on earth is hell getting bigger? People are dying every day. And when people die and go to hell, hell gets bigger. And Jesus said, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Many of you are going to go to hell outside the preaching of the gospel on how to be saved. You are hearing the gospel being preached to you on a Saturday morning. And for many of you, multiple Saturday mornings about Jesus 
Now, remember I mentioned extras because it's a holiday tomorrow, and I like to kick holidays. Last year, April 1st was on a Saturday, and I had a ball. If you like, come on up. I'll give you one of my cards, and you can find it on YouTube. You gotta rest assured that Jesus saves, but he's not gonna save you on your conditions. He's not gonna save you by religion. He's not gonna save you. Oh, if I go here and I do that, or if I want this or this or that, it's all been settled by God upon Calvary. And the salvation is not of work. upon the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures. Well, preacher, I'm a good person. You want scripture? There's none that doeth good. That's scripture. You're not good enough. Well, preacher, me and my religion, we're righteous. You want scripture? There is none righteous. No, not one. You don't want me to tell you what God thinks of your works in the book of Isaiah, do you? He says, your works are as a filthy rag, and I'll leave it just as that. And that comment is exactly what you would be thinking. Imagine the Bible. Imagine the Bible. Saying, I'm not good enough. No, you're not. And you heard a preacher tell you that. Oh, preacher, I got my palm leaf. There's plenty of palms around here. What's that going to do? You can get smacked in the head by a palm tree right now and die and go into hell. It was a Palm Saturday. What about the palms of Jesus with those nail prints in his hands? I don't have any nail prints. I can't save your soul. Do you realize the Bible says that for all eternity in the hands and feet and the side of Jesus are the marks that he suffered and died for you? And you're going to, oh, I got a palm. I got the palm of God with the nail prints of, of my sins in those hands. You know what's worse? Jesus put his hands on that wood and let them nail him. I'll say one thing about all the sayings. I do believe one thing. That when he was nailed to that cross, he did it for me. And he did it for you. Whosoever. That's you. Being nailed to the cross on Wednesday was for you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth. What must you do to be saved? Saved from what? Saved from hell. That's why I got saved. They told me as a young man, you're going to hell. I said, I don't want to go to hell. I'm Catholic. You're still going to hell. Wait a minute, I'm a Catholic. You're still going to hell. That's what they told me. And they opened up the Bible and they said, None do it good. Ooh. Uh-oh. That's me. There is none righteous. Uh-oh, that's me. And the Bible says you're no good. And the Bible says you're not righteous. You're not going to heaven. And if your preacher tells you you're going to heaven... Outside of not being good and not being righteous, you tell him I said he's a liar. And I'll look his name up under John 8.44. I'll look his name up in the book of Corinthians as Satan fell from, from the sky. That angel of light. And his ministers. Because the man of the God of the Bible will preach the gospel. 
that Jesus Christ suffered and died for you, that you can't go to a priest. You can't go to water. You cannot do nothing to get to heaven except by the finished work of Jesus Christ. You're not good enough. I am not good enough. And the only righteousness I have today is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is it. I am not bragging about what I can do because I've done nothing. I am not going to stand up here and proclaim me. I'm going to stand up here and proclaim Jesus. Jesus Christ. Do you realize that this bearded man yelling and screaming I've been here for four or five years and many of you don't even know who I am. But you've heard Jesus. You've heard you know about Jesus Christ. Are you going to tell me through all the billions and quadrillions of trillions of billions of what billions of quadrillions of two billions of people you are going to go up to God and say, hey, look at me, God. Aren't you glad I'm here? God, look. Look, God, over here. I've been confirmed. Look. <laughs> look, God, I've been a member of this church. God said, look, they're closed. <laughs> it's not church. It's not even denomination. There are people out there that say we're non-denominational. Isn't that a denomination? If you're a Catholic, you've got no hope. Purgatory's closed, now the Pope says there's no hell. That means every reject goes to heaven. According to the Pope's statement, if the Catholic Church, being not Catholic, being a, 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 a backslider from the Catholic Church, I'm going to go where Catholics go. If there's no hell. And then you throw all the traditions. I'll throw something at you. Jesus suffered and died according to the scripture. What are you going to do with that? He was buried. And hallelujah, the Easter Bunny came. Absolutely not. Jesus suffered and died and rose three days and three nights later. And you know what about Jesus? When he was buried, he went into hell. And deposit your sins if you were to put your faith and trust in him. Isn't that wonderful? You do not have to go to hell since Jesus already went to hell for you. Now I'm not the kind of person jokes and, and I don't think preaching is, is comedy. And I throw things out there that are wild and weird and you don't have to believe it. Okay? And this you don't have to believe but it's an illustration. Not all illustrations are biblical, but they do prove a point. Imagine you dying in your sins, and you get down in hell, and you see packages there with your name on them, and Jesus already paid for those sins, but you refuse to... So you get double damnation because you didn't believe on Jesus. You did not need to go to hell. Jesus already went to hell, but you said, hey, I got a better way. I'll get baptized in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Jesus, what do you think of that? I'll worship Baal. He'll come up on the east. I hope it's a cloudy, dark day tomorrow morning. I hope your Baal does not come. I'm going to pray that. I'm going to pray that your Baal will not rise tomorrow morning. Hell, rain. How's that? How about rain on your religion? But I do know one thing. If it's dark tomorrow and you don't see Baal, I'll see Jesus one day whether I die or whether he comes. I will see Jesus. So can you. You put your faith and trust on him. 
How's that? If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, your name will be put in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is better than any church wall. That is better to have your name on a thing and say you're going to be baptized. Having your name written with the blood of Jesus Christ in the Lamb's Book of Life, that's eternal, that's, that's reservations made by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Religion cannot get those reservations. Doing good cannot get those reservations. I've already told you, there is none that doeth good. All have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God, including me. Not that you would answer, ask my wife. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I am not a sinner according to religion. I am not a sinner according to works. I am a sinner saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus. I have a message that the world doesn't want. The Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. The Bible says that Jesus says, no, it hated me first. If your Jesus is well-liked, well-pleasing, well-accepted, a mega church, you got the wrong Jesus. You know what my Jesus got for three and a half years of ministry? He got the cross. Why did he get the cross? Because I'm the sinner. You're the sinner. He's despised and rejected of men. Right here before my eyes. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, he'll be scorned right before my eyes. what you guys have tried to do to stop the word of God and yet Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never never pass away realize we've been through bongos we've been through DJ we've been through harassment we've been through mocking and yet today to Jesus Christ the word of God is preached it's freely preached it's allowed to be audible in your ears that credit's not mine, my friend. That credit goes to Jesus Christ, God, for winning the victory. You cannot stop the Word of God outside of God stopping the Word of God. There may be a day that God says, okay, move on, i got something else for you. You know what God told the prophet Jeremiah about Israel? Or Judah? Israel, Jeremiah, but Judah? He says, don't you dare pray for them. I will not even hear it. I don't know what your prayers are, but my prayer is that you get saved. My prayer is that you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved before you die. I want to share something with you. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be my 57th anniversary of being baptized. I was going to do, you can do the math. I was 21 years old. I did it on my lunch hour. I worked at A&P stores, yep. and my sponsor said, this church is right across the street. Let's go to the, I mean, it's all planned. Yep. Let's, I'm out on our lunch hour. Let's go get, get you baptized. Did you ever trust Christ as your Savior? Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, my God. Not the baptism, it's the Savior, right? Oh my God, yes. Amen. You said you were a Catholic? No. At one time? Well, well, yeah, at one time. I don't know if you got anything. Roman Catholic? You know Pope just said there's no hell? Well, I know yeah. that they took that out of context. Oh, or not. no, no. He said. There's definitely a hell. No, he said there isn't. Did you ever read the story of the Lady Fatima when you were a Catholic kid? I read all that mess. 
That's the guy who's okay. She's not the place. How she opened up the earth and the kids to all the hell down below and just like a rainstorm. I know God opened up the earth and took the whole tribe to wash them out. Oh, this definitely. I think there's different degrees of heaven. So. Heaven, there's one degree. Jesus Christ. Hell, there are several labels. Okay. I can, I can. And those priests and those folks. Anyway, anyways, 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 on my 50th anniversary, I was so happy. Amen. Make sure it's on the blood. Have a nice resurrection. Have a nice resurrection. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. I don't believe in him. Psalm 53 verse 1 says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. That's your day tomorrow. Have a national atheist march on, on uh, Hollywood. Okay, Hollywood. And Washington, D.C., April 1st. And then you know what God will say when you appear before him at the judgment? See? Ha ha. April fools. I'm alive. You're dead. In trespasses and in sins. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But God, I thought you didn't believe in me. Would it be a fearful thing to be an atheist standing before God one day? Wouldn't it be a fearful thing to be a Catholic standing before God one day and find out it's not Mary? Wouldn't it be a fearful thing to be a Jehovah Witness standing before God one day and Jesus saying, Hi, it's me, God. We don't have watchtowers here. We got the King James 1611 Bible and the Geneva Bible. That's it, friends. New world, new world, the heavens and the earth fled from the presence of God, the Father in heaven, in Revelation 19 and 20. Imagine a Mormon stepping up to God, hey, we're here to populate the, the, the heavenly bodies. Uh, they fled away from me about a little while ago. Now what have you done with Jesus? Oh, we got another testament of Jesus Christ. He came to North America with Hebrew names. Never heard of them. Never heard of you. Your name in the book? No. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Oh, Lord, I was baptized with my family. Is it the blood? It's water. Sorry. Don't go to heaven. Don't pass go. Go right straight to hell. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. It's not religion. It's not what you can do. It's what Jesus has done. Listen, I don't mean to kick what you believe, but if it's not Jesus, there's no belief. You just think I'm cruel. You think I'm kicking your gods. I am, but because they're wrong. There is no God but God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ. That is it. Heaven is not Willy Walker's chocolate factory. It's not Santa's workshop in the North Pole. It is heaven where God said, Be holy, for I am holy. And you can't do that without Jesus. You're filthy. You stink. Well, what you believe on if you're not Jesus? I'll tell you what Jesus will get you. The moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You talk about God the Father. When you receive Christ as your Savior, you are adopted by God into His family. He becomes truly your Father. You leave your father the devil, 844, for God the Father. And he gives you the indwelling Holy Spirit to dwell with you for all eternity. You will get a new body. Many people should work for that. is a lie? Oh man, preacher, you're hitting everybody today. Bowling, put the ten pins up, I'll kick them, knock them down with Jesus Christ. If 
If you believe in evolution, why are you wearing glasses? Why are you taking pills? Why are you breaking down? Why are you humping over? Why are you going to the hospital? Why do you have a doctor? Why do you have life insurance if you believe in evolution? I don't believe in evolution, but I got life insurance. You do? Yeah. Jesus Christ. He suffered and died and paid the penalty for me. I had to come to him as a sinner that I was. Anyway. I was a sinner, and I'm a sinner today. And there's only one means to get a pardon. you got to be guilty. You ask any judge or any lawyer, can I get a pardon not being guilty? Absolutely not. And you cannot expect God to allow you into his heaven without the pardon of Jesus Christ. And that pardon does not come by what you've done. It comes by what Jesus has done. Again, out of the billions and billions of how many people has been on this earth, you think you're the one that God's going to be pleased with. Really? Let me talk to your spouse. Let me talk to your parents. Let me talk to your children. We'll see how great you are. You know, to him, how great thou art is not about you. It's about Jesus. Oh, I'm American. I don't find America anywhere in the Bible. Well, we're in the Bible Belt. What is that? <laughs> God will unbuckle that Bible belt and drop your pants before all the world as you will lay exposed before Jesus Christ who paid the penalty, who paid the price for your sin as he cashes you off into hell with your Bible belt. Some people with the Bible belt, oh, you can't kill a cow, so it's got to be imitation. But when it comes to sin, you've got to have to kill Jesus Christ, God. He had to be on that cross according to the scriptures. He had to be on that burial ground. He had to be risen from the grave three days and three nights according to the scriptures. It had to be the real God. No preservatives. You cannot have a veggie Jesus. Cain tried that and God said, I don't approve of that. Take that farmer's market and get out of here and bring me the blood like your brother Abel. I'll tell you what I'll do to Abel. I'll kill him. How's that, God? Get out of my face, Cain. God, you said believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do it. I'll do exactly what I did to your grandparents, Adam and Eve. Get out of my face. Depart from me, you workers of nuclear. I never knew you. Unless you know Jesus Christ. Unless you put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, God does not know you and he does not love you. That may be a red pill. You are really a sinner if you think God loves you by what you do and not what his son does. You are wicked and vile. And I'm not saying that the Bible says. Let's, let me open the Bible. I, I hate to have you think that I'm just talking out my wind here. I'll open the Bible to John chapter 3. Where we start every week off. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. God wants you saved. God's not willing that any should perish. He that believes on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You're already condemned without Jesus Christ. You need to be uncondemned by Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith and trust that Jesus paid it all. That the blood of Jesus Christ is God's blood. That Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Jesus.
Jesus said not me. Jesus said not the Pope. Jesus said not the Baptist Church. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, I got Mary. Ain't gonna work. I got baptism. Ain't gonna work. I use the word ain't to irritate you so you will listen more. I know how to get your attention. I know if I speak in proper English, your head will be, oh, he didn't say that right. <laughs> Got your attention, though, didn't I? And I want your attention now focused to Jesus. For Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. Despite what you think, despite what you believe, if it's not Jesus, God will tell you you're wrong. And you don't want God to tell you you're wrong. You can reject the preaching that's before you today, but you're not going to reject God one day. You may scorn and ridicule the preacher, but wait till you stand before God. Wait till you hear God say to you, remember that preacher I sent you? Yeah. Oh, he had beautiful feet. You know that's in the gospel? I mean, that's in the Bible? When that man got up every week and proclaimed my son, oh, I love that. And you would say, oh, I wish he took a flying leap in that lake over there. You know, that's no. I love when Jesus is proclaimed. Oh, God, look at my credentials. Look at what I've done. <laughs> you mean what I've done for you? You mean when I suffered and died according to the scriptures for you? You mean when they buried me? You mean when I came out of the grave three days and three nights later? What I did for you. That's the important. It's who is the I? Is the I, is it you? Or is it God? You will proclaim to God, look what I did. And God will respond back, no, it's what I have done. And it's sorry that many of you are not going to realize your error of your ways until you stand before God. And John chapter 3, stand condemned. As God will cast you off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. We stand here and preach Jesus that you may obtain eternal life. There is no greater other message to be heard. April 1st or Easter cannot save your soul. Nothing of Easter is Christian. It is all Babylonian garbage. Easter is a Roman pagan holiday. But Jesus is God. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus suffered and died that you may have eternal life. Jesus is the means of not going to hell.